Welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all of the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, Mark Ellis. Welcome one and all to the greatest movie news show in the galaxy. We are live to tape here on Taco Tuesday from our Southern California offices at Collider. Uh, my name is Mark, like Ashley said, and joining us today on the panel, we have two handsome gentlemen, and we have breaking stories today. It's a lot of excitement. Yes, also here in his chair is John Schnapp. Hey, what's going on? Um, glad to be here. Also here, <laughs> Christian Harloff. It's great to see everybody. Oh my I hope gosh. everyone's well. Uh, you gotta love the energy in this it's room. It's palatable, and I think I know why everybody's so Woo. over the moon. It would be the new Warcraft trailer yeah. that just dropped. It's so fresh; it's not even in the rundown. So we're gonna talk about it right now. We do want to let you guys know on Collider Video, you can check out Christian and I did a reaction to it as we're watching it live. You guys get to see our faces. And Christian, you seem to like this one a little bit more than me. What's going on with you? Whatever you gotta do, do it now. <laughs> um, I liked it, and look, I, but I un also understood where you were coming from. I'm sure you'll reiterate that in a second. That if you saw this trailer and you weren't on board the first time, I don't think it's going to win you over now. Um, it added a few more things, a couple more images here and there, but the actual story a little bit more. But for me, I just it's it's the possibility of what Duncan Jones can do with this franchise. It's the fact that I know that so many people involved in this were sweaties of Warcraft and they want they're not just capitalizing on this they really want to bring a version of this property to the fans and to us and to mm -hmm. introduce um, a, a brand new realm to all of us so that I think is what's leading me and as I see it and I said this in the review that I felt that the special effects and the way it looks looks a little bit more Hobbit than I maybe would want it to look I'd like it to look, maybe look a little more Lord of the Rings um, but I haven't seen the movie yet so I don't know if, if, if it fits the style yet but I really I'm excited for this film so I think my excitement is leading me towards okay the imagery works for me I was on board the last time, so I'm still on board. Well, I, I try not to look at things in black and white in terms of my excitement for a movie. I see things in glorious technicolor, which means it's not just, oh, I don't want to see this movie or I can't wait to see this thing. I was intrigued when I saw the Warcraft show, the first one that dropped last year at Comic-Con. I'm like, okay, we have something here. I want to see some improvements. The problem that I have with this trailer is that now we're so close to the release. This thing comes out the first weekend in June, kids, and it didn't move me at all. It, it didn't make me want to see the movie more, and whereas if you have something that so totally grips you from the first teaser you're like yes I'm paying to see this movie opening weekend Warcraft didn't do that for me and so for this trailer I wanted this to be the one that won me over and said you know what I need to get my butt out of the I couch that, yeah. and I need to go to the movie opening weekend I don't know that this trailer is going to make a lot of people who didn't grow up playing Warcraft or play it today go pay money to see it by the same token Schnepp, my concern with hardcore Warcraft fans is that you don't have enough in this trailer to make them feel like it's going to be true to the mythology that they play for 20 hours a day sure I, I don't think any like i played warcraft i don't i don't want to see some dudes chopping wood <laughs> like get me some more gold <laughs> so i you know there's certain things i don't want to see in a warcraft movie that are the mechanics of the game but uh i honestly this second trailer won me over like the first trailer i was like ah you know i I, was, I guess it was getting used to the way they had made the orcs look but they look great I mean, I think this this trailer actually shows you more of the story, which is what I wanted to see. Like, I get it. They're, they're you know, humans and orcs and they're going to fight. But this was kind of cool just seeing just a little bit more of how they're going to start it all up. And I, I, for some reason, the way they put this trailer together, to, you know, made me say, wow, I actually want to see this Warcraft film as opposed to like, uh, it's a combination. It is a combination of Lord of the Rings and. Um, you know, every other fantasy game that's ever been turned into a movie or I mean, because that's what the mythology is. So it's sort of like it does look like, you know, everything else. But at the same time, it, it, you know, I think they did a lot of extra things, at least for myself. I like the armor. I like some of the little flourishes that are in there right now. So, yeah, for me, I, I was actually now I'm interested in seeing the fan. And, and, yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm not turning into Sour Puss Ellis here about, oh, I don't want to see this movie. I'm still excited to see <laughs> Warcraft. It just didn't do anything more just to me than sure. I already right, wanted. Right, I if it. you want yeah. to meet Sour Puss Ellis, he's going to be talking about a movie coming out this <laughs> weekend a little bit later on in the show. Question for you as a Warcraft fan. Did you know or were you aware that this um, movie takes place like before the events leading into the first game? 
No, I did okay. not. Yeah, so I just found that out recently, too, and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I had yeah. no idea, but again, not a hardcore Warcraft right. guy. So what this movie needs to do is it needs to get the casual fan who's aware that there's a thing called Warcraft, as well as hook the hardcore fans and make them love this movie and say, yes, it stayed true to the game that I know, and they get new people like me who hopefully want to sign up and play Warcraft afterwards. So we'll have to wait and see. Check out the trailer reaction that Christian and I did right now on the Collider Video YouTube channel. Ashley, before we bring you in for this, mm -hmm. there's some more breaking news, and that would be the still images that were just released from the new Magnificent Seven reboot. Look at that. You have stars like Ethan Hawke, Denzel Washington, Chris Pratt, amongst others. And this movie is coming out in September, and obviously it's a remake of the 1960 classic. You, you know, Schnepp, you look at these pictures, and there's no Yul Brenner, there's no Steve McQueen, and you know you miss those guys because Magnificent Seven, the first one, is so much fun. It is a classic Western about a group of American gunslingers who go defend a tiny village against evil cartels. Do you want to see this movie? And if not, did you want to see it more or less after seeing these pictures? Uh, I've, I, I love the story of the Magnificent Seven. It follows the Seven Samurai, which is, it's been remade so many times. Battle Beyond the Stars, another like Magnificent Seven. I'm sure we'll get a Star Wars version of the Magnificent Seven. I love the story. I love like going to get the, the, you know, the outlaws teaming up and then saving or getting a solution at the end. So, yeah, I think all this... This mixture of actors looks really promising to me. I can't wait to see a trailer for it. So, yeah, I buy it. Christian, balls in your court. I uh, Look, we had heard about this thing. Actually, Mark Ryle and I got a, a scoop on this thing like a long time ago that Fuqua were, it, mm. was doing it. So mm -hmm. when we had heard about it before anybody else did. We had heard about it. We're like, this could be really cool yeah. if they do this. And then, you know, obviously Denzel and then Chris Pratt and everybody joining. <laughs> and you see that image. That's a great image. Just, I mean, it's simple, yeah. but that's your team. Yeah, that's, that's your, your team. team. It and looks I, great. Yeah, and I'll tell you who I'm most excited about in that picture is Ethan Hawke. I think mm -hmm. Ethan Hawke mm. fits the bill so well. I don't know what the cat character is, but it just it kind of it kind of throws back. And I know Magnificent Seven was around a long time right. ago, but it also reminds me of Young Guns. Yeah, um, definitely. It's got a it's got a cool action flavor, yeah, and all the characters I mean, yeah. look different. Like Dinoff and uh, Vincent uh, D'Onofrio is like you know he looks like some you know bad like woodsman. I'm, yeah. boy, why'd you <laughs> take me out of my cabin? You know, <laughs> he looks it, like he belongs in Warcraft. Oh, yeah, yeah is, definitely. I'll take it. I'm loving this picture. I'm actually yeah. really excited for this movie. You know who else is too? Because Schnapp, as you alluded to, that this movie is. Based, it's based on the 1960 Magnificent Seven, but that was based on Seven Samurai, directed by who, Ashley Mova? Um, uh, Kurosawa. Kurosawa. Uh, what, was yeah. the first name? what was the first name? Akira, Akira Kurosawa. Kurosawa. Akira Kurosawa. You got the One harder the part right. Yeah. Congratulations. And now we finally get to kick off with our actual rundown for today's show. And to do that, we go to Miss Mova. Yes. 20th Century Fox finally confirmed Deadpool 2 <laughs> would be moving forward with director Tim Miller back for a second <laughs> round. And now our own Steve Frosty Weintraub was able to sit down with Miller for an exclusive chat at CinemaCon about it and the rumored X-Force movie. Movie. Miller revealed to Frosty that they are deep into the writing of the script of Deadpool 2, with Fox giving them the time they need to do so. Miller mentioned the time frame for the movie to shoot, saying, None of the times that have been under discussion have made me go, oh no, you're going to make me do something horrible just to meet that release date. They want it to be great and they're giving us the time to make it great. As for the other rumored R-rated movie in the X-Men universe, X-Force, Miller briefly described his feelings for it saying, I'll just say I'd like it to be an R-rated movie, but I've always been very realistic. We're not making fine art here. This is commerce. So if for some reason there was a story that needed to be bigger and needed to be at a certain budget and it didn't warrant an R-rated budget, although it's harder to make that argument now after Deadpool, but let's say we were saying it before Deadpool came out, I understand that. Mark, thoughts on Tim Miller's comments? Well, let's get to the easy part first, is that I'm very excited to hear that Tim Miller is so excited to be back for Deadpool 2, if that is in fact the case. Uh, it gets a little bit murkier waters when you're talking about the X-Force. I mean, Deadpool 2, we can pretty much assume, is going to be R-rated because the first one was so successful, it made such a splash, partially because it not only was R-rated, but it marketed itself R-rated, and people got excited to see the <coughs> Deadpool that they thought they were going to get to see from the comics. Deadpool 2, going to be R-rated, take it to the bank. X-Force, I like that Miller is being uh, pragmatic about it. I like that he's practical. He's like, look, I understand that for marketing concerns, if you call a movie X-Force and you have other characters in there, you might not be able to make it rated R, and I get that. So he seems like a level-headed dude when he's approaching making a movie, Schnepp. Do you like his comments as far as doing Deadpool 2 and then the possibility of X-Force having to be PG-13? Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy he's coming back. I think it was important to get the entire original team that made that mega hit back to make the second one because it's a, 
a magical team and hopefully they can recreate that so yeah obviously deadpool will be back and it'll be rated r we got the entire team back i buy everything he's saying it's like i think uh you know, before Deadpool, you would never have thought of having any of these teen movies be, P, you know, obviously PG-13, but never are. But now I think he's right. They've set a precedent. Deadpool is going to be part of X-Force, as will Cable. I think you go from an R and an R to a PG-13. What are they going to do, a G-rated X-Force as a musical? You know what I mean? It's, it has to be R. <laughs> it kind of just, it's like you've already set a precedent. Let these guys rock this quadrant of these with these characters and what all of us fans really liked from the film which is basically a no holds barred action film with superheroes swearing violence craziness fun i mean that's that's kind of what deadpool is and that's what i want to see deadpool too and that's what i want to see in x-force i don't want to see them you know, like crimp backs so they can like have a family go on the weekend it's not a family film it's a it's basically for young adults and older adults. That's what I, how I feel. Okay, now, Christian, if you were a musician, your instrument would be the R-rated trumpet. You love R-rated yeah. movies. You love when movies can be true to the source material. So I think we all agree Deadpool 2 should be rated R. How about X-Force? Do you see that being R-rated, or is it going to have to be PG-13? I think it's going to be exactly what Tim Miller said. It's going to be a conversation that happens, that there's going to be arguments towards the fact that it could be R, and there's going to be arguments to the fact it could be PG-13. I will say, Schnepp, that PG-13 doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be G, you know, or no, have I that know, kind of I feel know. or family, but it, like, you can <laughs> Make a, you can push PG-13 pr pretty pretty dark. I mean, not to the level that you did to Deadpool, obviously. Not that Deadpool was dark, but you know what I mean, with the, the vulgarity and, and the over-the-top violence. Right. You could still do. You could still achieve some pretty great stuff in a PG thirteen. But I, that being said, I do agree with you very much that you're setting up these characters in the rated R world that whether it be Cable and then and Deadpool and De after Deadpool 2, that we're going to be so used to this particular set of films in the R-rated space that it would make sense to put that in R-rated as well. And then again, the flip side of the coin is, can you introduce new characters that in X-Force that would live in a PG world, PG-13 world? So maybe there's some PG-13 elements that, that that are added into this world they, they, let's let's split the middle here let's get the pg-13 it can work let's get right to the edge of rated r and make it pg-13 so we can get more people out there i can see either way happening but what i liked about the comments was that they're going to sit down they're going to have a conversation about it and i don't think anyone in fox or anywhere else is saying deadpool 2 needs to be pg-13 that would set people off and i don't even think it's it's a conversation we need to have because it's not going to happen right yeah. and I, when you look at x-force snap it's like I, I, here's what they can do if x-force is rated, rated pg-13 they can have a blast with that marketing strategy because it's basically going to be deadpool making fun of the fact that now he's in x-force and that's pg-13 all the while getting us excited to see the movie. But the actual film itself, how limited is it going to be from the comic books if you can't make that thing R? Well, what's interesting is, like, to make an R, all you have to do is drop two F-bombs, which I think, you know, that's stupid. You have one F-bomb, it's PG-13. Right. You have two, it's R. So the, the rating system's already flawed and dumb. It needs to get worked on and it's fixed. It's effed up. Just, it's effed <laughs> up. Um, but aside from that, it, it could be a challenge for them to have, you know, Deadpool come up with different like PG-13 rips on people. You swabbly Windheimer. You'd be like, what's that? <laughs> well, I couldn't say what I really wanted to say. So, you know, I don't know if they want to take that Pepsi challenge or not. I think just make it our. All right, you Windheimer mofo. What's our next topic? <laughs> Amazon has now changed up their streaming slash Prime membership in order to compete directly with Netflix, with the rap reporting that they will be launching a standalone subscription service just for its streaming video arm for $8.99 a month. Amazon Prime was previously charging a $99 a year membership that included free and second day shipping of physical goods. But now that video services have expanded into original programming, Amazon has made the long overdue move to compete directly with Netflix and other services. Amazon's video service will be priced below the popular tiers of its larger rivals like Netflix, which last year raised the price of its standard plan from $7.99 to $9.99. No word yet on when the service will be officially launched. Schnepp, what do you think of the new pricing plan for Amazon streaming? I think it makes sense. I mean, hey, look, you know, all of, a lot of people are probably like, look, I buy things on Amazon. It's only 75 bucks. I get these extra movies. And then in the last year or so, you're like, wow, Amazon's actually worth 75 bucks a year, you know, because when, when they first started, it was just like, you know, a bunch of half ass rejects from Netflix and Hulu. It's like, everything's the same. Why would right. I need to? I don't need Amazon. They started their original programming. They've stepped it up, especially in the last two years. So they've actually become another one of these brand new streaming networks, which is absorbing everything away from cable, 
makes sense that they become a, a monthly fee. So right. why not? Yeah, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense to me because Amazon is the biggest player in that game. And for them to be doing this, they might have the biggest library of anybody. We don't know how extensive their movie database is going to be because, you know, you go on Netflix and it's like, oh, I really feel like watching Tango and Cash. Oh, it's not streaming. That sucks. Will that be available on Amazon? Right. We don't know that yet, but the original content game is where it's at. That's why you can charge. That's why Netflix could up their price from $7.99 to $9.99 because if you want to see Daredevil, okay? You want to see Kimmy Schmidt, you got to go to Netflix. That's the only place to get that stuff. So Amazon needs to create original content that's going to rival that, and we're going to end up paying those charges instead of cable bills in the long run. Christian, are you excited about this? You already have Amazon Prime, I believe. Yeah. Are you you going to be on board with this absolutely it's brilliant and it's smart and I, what it's also going to do is it's going to up netflix's game mm -hmm. and you know it's the same thing i'll throw a wrestling reference in there when wcw and wwe were going at it back in the day the products started to get better because there's more competition and netflix is already awesome so they're going to have more stuff there's going to be these these battles of who gets it and because netflix is putting in these bids for big movies and stuff already mm -hmm. now and 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 you're going to see it more from amazon you're going to see it from more from hulu and I think that this is a great move. I think it's it is it's the evolution of the streaming process. It's these are the new networks. This is the new network stuff. This is the stuff that the best stuff right now on television are coming from whether it be Netflix or these these series. Like I loved eleven twenty two sixty three, and that was that was Hulu. I was like locked in, and you know, and even like something like uh, the People vs OJ, which when you watch that, I watched it all on demand, but it still it wasn't it didn't feel like network television. You know, it felt like there, there's more of the way that they're just just recording stuff now the way that they're just <laughs> approaching stuff now and so for amazon to do this you're going to see a lot new more new series here now who now uh, the exciting thing is we've always talked every time i talk about uh, the night cell republic and i talk about uh well maybe they, they they sign a deal with netflix i like the conversation that i'm gonna be able to have like who knows? Maybe Amazon. Maybe Amazon does it now. Amazon's going to have is going to be in the market. Right. So I think it's a great. So thing. to summarize your argument, you like this because it's another platform yes. where a potential Star Wars property could land. Correct. That's always good news. Or maybe even oh, look. Who knows what? Who knows if uh, if if DC wants to start doing stuff there or you know because now maybe they're going to obviously they have the network and they're doing stuff like Gotham and I just feel like they could explore more stuff and whether or not it's just it could be it could be a, a many different IPs that could could live on Amazon now. Yeah, just just wait till like two years from now. Yeah. That's like literally the streaming wars are already percolating. So once cable really, really subsides in the next two years, you'll see, you know, big, big money going down. Especially we saw it happen at Sundance this year. Who are the top guns? It was Amazon and Netflix. It wasn't like a television series or, or even films. It was Netflix. Yeah. That's right. Well, we're of the same mind. Welcome to the party, pal. Amazon. You guys, right now, comment on this vid. Let us know what do you guys think about Amazon's new streaming service and any of these other stories we're talking about. Let us know your take right now. And now we go to Ashley for a topic that she's very excited about. We got some Power Ranger stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Entertainment Weekly has given us an exclusive first look at Elizabeth Banks' Rita Repulsa villain from the rebooted Power Rangers movie. The actress stars as the fan favorite character in the new movie that features five super teens, better known as the Blue, Yellow, Black, Pink, and Red Rangers, fighting to take down Repulsa, the evil humanoid alien witch trying to conquer Earth. Power Rangers will drop in theaters on March 24, 2017. Christian, thoughts on Elizabeth Banks' Rita Repulsa? Oh, oh the dre oh the dreaded shit rats are coming out for Rita Repulsa. Is that really necessary? <laughs> no, I, li I like. I actually really like this. I'm going to buy it. I, th I I I have been pretty vocal. We're not selling it yet, but you can. We're yeah. not a buyer or seller no, yet. No, 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 no. Whatever. What? If, you, if you weren't adjusting your teeth to be in front of your gums for that latest picture, you would have noticed that. I got to adjust something else because I really got to go to the bathroom. Um, <laughs> and, and buyer, buy, buy or sell. I'm going to buy this because I don't care about buyer or sell right now. Um, I will tell you that I, I saw this picture this morning and I don't, I've been pretty vocal. I don't, I'm not as excited. I'm not excited at all for Power Rangers. A lot of people have talked about it's a younger, it's the generation is not my generation. However, I saw this picture. I like the design of it. And I also know she's been, she's been, uh, she was Effie Trinket in, in the Hunger Games movies and she embraced it. And she looks like, even just the way she's dressed up, looks like she's having fun doing it. And I really, I, I dug the design. I don't know the character well enough to say whether or not it's authentic or not, or even if it's an original character. I'm not going to pretend that I'm, uh, that I know what the hell I'm talking about here. But as far as the, the way that it looks, yeah, I like it a lot. Okay, so Schnepp, we learned that Christian likes this picture and it has a turtle head poking out. So what is the current state of your vows, and do you like this image? Man, I totally buy this image. 
Uh, even I though we're not, we're not even in buy and sell. Oh. But you know what? Uh, I think uh, I, I like the image. It reminds me of this movie called The Wolverine, uh, where he fought this uh, kind of green kind of like person in a cosplay outfit named Viper. Remember that? Uh, not the Wolverine that we all know. It's yeah. Hugh Jackman in the yeah. Claws. Yeah. Oh, that movie. Yeah, it was just called The Wolverine. And he fought a dude, a green person. Yeah, green lady at the end. It's yeah. Bef- it was The Wolverine, right? the second one. Right. Yeah, so that, it looks a lot like that outfit, but a better version of it. Um, you know, it's going to be hard for me to even want to see this film, so I'm not the right demographic to even talk about outfits for Power Rangers, but... If you know, I, I'd be more interested in the fans and what they have to say. Any of any of you who've watched Power Rangers in the past and you're Power Rangers fans, does this fit into even a new Power Rangers look? Is this something that excites you? Like, oh my god, this looks amazing, or is it like something like it doesn't have the spandex? You know, I don't really, I don't get Power Rangers at all. So for me, it's like she looks cool. She's got like some weird little nobulins on her face, and she's all green. I don't know. Well, you know what? You're in for a treat as well as everybody else out there because we happen to have live right now someone who might be a fan of Power Rangers or at least in that demographic. Now we go to Ashley Brilliant. Mova. Did, did you grow up watching Power Rangers I at all? I used to be obsessed with the Power Rangers. When I was about five, I wanted to be the Pink Ranger so bad. Needless to say, I mean, I was You a look like the ball. Pink Ranger right now. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> um, but... I mean, from what I remember, this is definitely different than the Rita Repulsa that was in the show, but I, I love the new take. It's okay. different. I love Elizabeth Banks. I think that she's, I hope that she like takes this the comedic route because I love her. I think she's hilarious. Mm. Um, I was saying in the pre-production meeting that I think that she looks like Lady Gaga, wanted to dress as Robin Hood <laughs> for the Oscars, and this is what she came up with. Nice. Um, I'm excited. This makes me excited for it. It's not like, you know, OG Rita Repulsa, but it's a new take on it. Yeah, I, I don't really care about this image at all. Like, it does it doesn't look stupid oh, to me. Oh, you're so cool, it's, Mark. I don't care at all. <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not uh, She to just called you a loser. With how Bam. awesome I am. I know that I'm the coolest guy here in the panel, or I know that I can at least get through a 45-minute show. Now you just called me uh, you. Now, you're you're a now we're losers, losers Christian. <laughs> all right, whatever. No more Gatorade for you. I don't care about this at all because I'm just too goddamn cool. You heard it here right. first. Okay, now it is time for Christian's favorite segment, buy or sell. sell. What's up first? <laughs> of course. According to a report from The Wrap, Star Wars The Force Awakens star Daisy Ridley will re-team with her director J.J. Abrams on Colma, a fantasy thriller that Diary of a Teenage Girl director Marielle Heller will helm. J.J. Abrams will produce this time through his Bad Robot production company for Paramount Studios. Based on the 2003 Israeli movie titled All I've Got, the story is described as a cross between The Notebook and Albert Brooks' Defending Your Life, with the story following a young couple who get in a car accident that leaves the man dead. Decades later, the old woman must choose whether to reunite with her long-lost love in the afterlife or to return to the fateful day her life changed forever. No release date has been set. Mark Byers sell Daisy Ridley's new movie, Colma. It's a buy for me with the talent involved and that premise. I mean, look, The Notebook, yes, I really enjoyed The Notebook. The end got me just a little bit misty-eyed. And Defending Your Life, you guys have not seen Defending Your Life with Albert Brooks. It is a masterpiece. It's great. You got Albert Brooks and Meryl Streep. I'm literally going to take you guys outside and bring you to the woodshed and beat you mercilessly because I'm talking about a movie I really care about. Maybe Coma's going to end up being that good. Maybe it won't. It might just be something that comes out under the radar that we enjoy. But Daisy Ridley, look, she's got big things planned for her, and uh, I can't wait to see this movie now i agree i think also for me i'm sorry i know he's so pissed off right now i apologize i'm sorry i'm not pissed there off. you are you're i pissed. don't care about this okay um <laughs> I, I buy it i buy it big because the fact daisy ridley um what i like about this work with jj abrams is she's allowed to, she's there's rumors that she's doing more and more stuff the tomb raider stuff and now this and the fact that she's and and look you got to use the card that jj's the one that gets you into the room to do new things it shows that she's not just going to try she's not going to be just trapped in the ray Role forever, you know, and and by doing dramas and do, it's, we all all said this when we saw her the first time. This is a this is someone who already has the chops to be a big movie star. We saw that, and now she's going to prove that she's got the chops to be like an actress that we want to continue to go watch in these films. I think this is a really good move, and the, and the, the book. Uh, synopsis sounds really interesting to me. Um, the idea that it just crossed back into like the the Notebook and the Albert Brooks film. Yeah, I, I buy this one. I like what, I, what I'm hearing. Snap, yeah. what do you got? I buy it because uh, of the, the smarts that J.J. Abrams as a producer has to get the director of Diary of a Teenage Girl, which was a fantastic film. Uh, one of my top tens of last year. 
It blew me away at what a great film it is, and it's mainly because of the director. What's her name again? Wait, you guys have it on your notes. J.J. Yes, yes, Abrams. Yes, yes. No, the no, director it with an M. of which yeah. Marielle Heller. Marielle Heller. Thank you. I mean, I don't. I, her name isn't like right off the top yet. of my yet, right. but it will be because she did such a great job. If you can see Diary of a Teenage Girl, see it immediately. Maybe it's on Amazon. It's one on a streaming service. Might be but streaming. It might be streaming. Like you're watching us. We're streaming. What's up? Well, so anyway, we're, we're, we're kind of streaming today. Yeah, no, I think streaming you know, as much as we possibly can today. Yeah. Uh, you know, and J.J. and uh, and. Uh, Daisy, you know, Ridley? Daisy Ridley that just that makes sense but like I, the thing that really excited me was the, the director they got cool. because she's an incredible find it's a buy across the board will it be that way for the next one let's hear it with just over two weeks to go until Marvel's Captain America Civil War drops in theaters, box office estimates are pointing towards a huge debut in theaters that is unsurprisingly record-breaking. Early predictions have the Joe and Anthony Russo directed film set to bring in $175 million in North American theaters, with other sources pointing to even a possible $200 million, a prediction which puts the film in the top five openings of all time. THR's report is said to have based their prediction on the very positive reactions to early screenings, which have generated even more buzz about the upcoming film. The report also considers that the movie could even far exceed expectations, opening even bigger than 200 million. Schnapp the Oracle, buy or sell Civil War, <laughs> making 200 million at the box office opening oh, weekend. Oh, oh, oh. oh yes. Um, you know what? I was saying this a couple days ago. It's going to make way over 200 million dollars. Way over. Yeah. It's 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 an incredible film. It's going to, the buzz, once people see this film, like, we've been buzzing about it. Well, some yeah. of us have. Oh, right. I mean, sorry, Ellis hasn't <laughs> yeah. seen it yet. <laughs> some but of us have. We, we've seen it, yeah. and we could we can't stop talking about it behind Ellis's back because we're keeping the spoilers away. We don't want to ruin it for you. He sees it tomorrow. You're seeing it tomorrow. There yeah, you go. Yeah, I was going to so, make the announcement. Oh, you oh, cannot kidding. stop ruining this show. <laughs> I know, I apologize. You just cannot kidding. stop wait, being the wait, monkey wait, in my wrench. Wait, really, you We haven't said that yet, so yeah. you know what? Like... No, That's it is good news that we can, yeah. like, like I was going to say today anyway, but yes, I'm seeing Civil War finally tomorrow night. I know nobody out there has any sympathy for me because people have to wait until May 6th, so I get to see it. It's going to be spoiler free. I will let you guys know how I felt about the movie in a single picture. Snap, continue. Is All this right. thing going to make over 200? It's gonna, I think it's going to make way over 200 million. I mean, 200 million is just like, the, it's, a, it's oh, it only made 200 million is what I'm saying. Like, I wouldn't be surprised for you to hear it's made 230 million. More than Star Wars. Yeah, wow. it's because... Basically, the buzz on this film is is over the chart. It's out of it's off the planet. It's insane. So, and when people see it, the immediately what they're gonna say to every single person they know is, "You've got to see this movie." So that's all that's gonna happen is on Thursday and Friday is that's all people are gonna hear. So they're gonna they're gonna run to the theaters on Saturday and even Sunday is gonna be insane. So. I mean, that's my that's what I feel. I feel like that's what's going to happen. Huge buy over there. How about over here? I'm going to buy that it, that it makes 200 million. I'm not going to buy that it, that it goes Star Wars numbers because I just don't think it covers the generations that that Star Wars had. Um, Spidey. It, it, Spidey's had too many bumps over the last couple uh, of uh, years, and I think people are still a little bit confused about it. I bought, 200 million is a big sure. number, and so and they're projecting it at like 170, 180, whatever it is. So I think that it's definitely going over that. Um, I think that it's going to hit the 200. It should hit the 200 for sure. Um, and I do think that some people out there are superhero fatigued. Um, now that being said, not not enough to where it's going to hurt a. 200 million is a lot. I'm just telling right. a friend of mine who I, I was raving about the movie and I saw and I said to my friend, I'm like, dude, you got to see Civil War. He's like, that's the one. That's the Captain America. one, right? He's like, he's like, I'm, I'm done right now. He's like, I'm sure it's great. I just uh, Batman, Superman, Deadpool, this some people. Sure. And is that going to take a huge chunk out of it? No, because there's so there's there's tons of people watching right now that are lined up or have their tickets ready to watch it. So I think it, it, there's going to be a lot of butts and seats. Has your friend seen these movies opening weekend in the past, though? Is a this lot, somebody who's a like... A lot of them, yeah, but I think that it's just because there's so much of it that he's just been kind of... Uh, I, like, it, there's just so much coming in, so he doesn't know. Maybe he's not following it. He's definitely not following it the same way that we do. Right. I buy that it's gonna make. I buy it's gonna make two hundred million. I really mm -hmm. do. Like, like I, I thought Batman vs Superman was gonna make two hundred million opening for a long time, and then I tempered those expectations. The movie, the week, or the week the movie's coming out, just because it was, it the word of mouth just was not there. But I think for this movie, it is gonna be there, and so I think it does have a realistic shot at doing two hundred. But even if this movie does, if this movie does Age of Ultron opening weekend numbers, which is like what was that one eighty seven somewhere oh, around there, do that. it's yeah. a it, it's an achievement if for no other reason because of what 
you guys are saying is that superhero fatigue can be a thing and people while they're looking forward to this we just saw two superheroes fight we just we, we, we've seen age of ultron we've seen all these captain america movies we're going to take a break from opening weekend and just give it a rest i think most people though are going to be lining up to see this movie and it's going to do at least 185 million dollars. you know what i'll say too is like i agree with the superhero fatigue like you get a couple of ones that just didn't do it but i'll say you know people who are like maybe weren't that happy with batman v superman from all the buzz totally. that they're hearing, they're like, no, this is the one we wanted to see, right. and it delivers. So. I think there's two separate people, yeah. for sure. There's there's that person you just said that was so looking forward to Batman vs Superman and said, well, I maybe I didn't get out exactly what I wanted to, maybe still really enjoyed it, but but still want to see a different kind of fight. But then there's the other side that is just more of the casual person that's like, I'm going to wait, uh, maybe whether it's not for opening weekend or maybe not at all, we right. don't know. And then there's the third type of person who wants to see it opening weekend but is grounded because they acted up on Movie Talk. <laughs> Ashley, what's our last buy or sell? As 20th Century Fox looks to the May 27th date of Brian Singer's X-Men Apocalypse, the marketing department is now taking over, <laughs> releasing a set of new historical promos that tease the ap appearance of Apocalypse throughout the year, suggesting that the world's first mutant has been the cause of many famous disasters from our history. One promo launched on Twitter reads, When Apocalypse rises, civilization falls. Civilizations fall, Atlantis sinks, proposing that it was Apocalypse that caused the disappearance of the famous city. Now we only have a little over one month to find out what other destruction Apocalypse will cause in our time when X-Men Apocalypse comes to theaters on May 27th. Christian, buy or sell the new promos for X-Men Apocalypse. Oh my. I love that George <laughs> yeah. Takai was doing. So that good. was George. It was. The guy Sulu. From, you guys didn't so see good. him on Star Trek, the guy from the Queso Lupo commercial. I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I buy it. Um, well. I, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was. It, it is something that you would catch on like an old special. And I liked the, the footage of Days oh, yeah. of Future Past and how it fits into the timeline now and just the the history of Apocalypse. I thought that was really cool. And and they continued what they did for Days of Future Past, where they have like these kind of promos to get you into it to let oh. you know that this is real in our world. And and until you go and see it, you know, have have fun with it, play make believe with us. And I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I loved it. This whole promo felt like something that remember like when you were a kid, and and probably they have monitors in classrooms now. But like back when I was a kid, you'd wheel a TV into the classroom right. and you'd play some boring like thing. You're learning about the human body or something. <laughs> That's what this felt like. And I loved it. Felt so authentic to me. I never saw those Days of Future Past promos you were mm. talking about. So I don't think a lot of people are going to be aware that this is coming out if you're not a hardcore movie or comic book movie fan. But if you get the chance to see this, it's really entertaining. It's like a minute long. Check it out if you haven't already seen it. Schnapp. It's fantastic. And you know what? It's, it's directly aping is we're all on YouTube right now. So after you've watched our show, check, just type in In Search Of. And it used to be narrated by Leonard Nimoy. So that's what this uh, is a tip of the awesome. hat to. That's why they got George Takai. So and it's a, it, it was so much fun to see something like an insert of opening sequence but like this week we talk about is apocalypse yep. real and then they you know feed into x-men footage have pyramids and stuff it's a lot of fun i i love this promotional campaign hats off to whoever thought this one up three topics nine buys across the board and now with all this positive energy we go into opening this week <laughs> Brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Ashley, what are we talking about? The Huntsman okay. Winter's yeah. War. Oh. Betrayed by her evil sister, Ravenna, Charlize Theron. Heartbroken Freya, Emily Blunt, retreats to a northern kingdom to raise an army of huntsmen as her protectors. Gifted with the ability to freeze her enemies in ice, Freya teaches her young soldiers to never fall in love. When Eric, Chris Hemsworth, and fellow warrior Sarah Jessica Chastain defy this rule, the angry queen does whatever she can do to stop them. As war between the siblings escalates, Eric and Sarah unite with Freya to end Ravina's wicked reign. Uh, I didn't <laughs> like this movie. I, I saw it last night. Christian and I saw it. Some other Collider folk got a chance to check it out. And uh, I, I just didn't dig this movie. Sorry. I, I actually liked Snow White and the Huntsman okay. I thought it was okay until Kristen Stewart tried to be like giving a pregame speech like she's Vince Lombardi and that thing just fell flat and the end of the mm. movie kind of did too. But I don't know why. I don't know who this movie's for. I think is the big question for the. I don't know that a lot of people love Snow White and the Huntsman so much that they want to see other stories in this universe. And the way that it's told, it just didn't grip me at all. And I thought <laughs> Emily Blunt as the Ice Queen just brought nothing to it. I thought she kind of embarrassed herself a little bit. Charlize Theron, it's pretty much just 
you know, mailing it in. Chris Hemsworth and Jessica Chastain, there wasn't a whole lot of chemistry there for them. I didn't buy a lot of the story points. I There's very few things I liked about this movie. As I'm talking about Christian, I just don't think I need to send anybody to the theater to see this. Do you feel differently? Uh, it's garbage. Uh, it's it's really bad. It's it's one of these movies that I was hoping for because, like I said, it's it plays. It's a fantasy movie, and in this fantasy genre, I'm always rooting for the fantasy genre because they they add some more stuff with like there's like uh, what not or, not orcs, but there's um fair not fairies what the orcs no, goblins not goblins there's goblins in this one too and at one point and and even that the CGI was kind of overdone and and they were underdone if you ask this guy but they were pointless for the, lot that's what this movie is it's pointless mm. all the way around from the story to the fact that it was made it's pointless so let me I ask did, you this i haven't seen it but does emily blunt sing something like let it go isn't she, she like looks, the chick from she, frozen it really looks let like it, it. I mean, at there's one a point, singing scene right I, le I leaned over to gray drake and i was ready for her to start singing frozen there's music. no music in no it? music but i will tell Get, it seriously no nope, there's no, no this isn't no. the sequel the bear frozen? comes in but they cut yeah. it out ah oh. yeah um but i agree with you i also think charlie Theron uh it was just screaming and yelling the whole time when she's in it she, it's 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 worthless um and i think you got to blame the director because i think that from the majority of it they don't know what they're doing with a lot of the actors in it like it's like they rely on Hemsworth to smile to get them out of really boring moments um, they I actually the only thing I disagree with you is I do think that Chastain and Hemsworth had good chemistry It was the only storyline that I cared about but the other thing is I seen the trailer and the way that they cut the trailer they they give you all, a lot of story information, story information, but they give you as much story information as you possibly can in this trailer. But then they try to surprise you during the movie, mm. and they try to. I'm like, I know that's going to happen because you showed me in the trailer. There were four times that that happened. That thing. I'm like, wait. But I know that the story's not about this because you mm. sold it differently. And the way that they set up Emily Blunt, Emily Blunt, who I haven't seen give a bad performance. This is one of her worst performances ever. I uh, when the poster says at the top of it from the producers of Maleficent, like if that's what's getting mm. us into the movie, I just don't think you need to see this thing ever, whether it's going to be in a theater or you're streaming it on Amazon years down the road. Ashley, please get me out of this segment. All right. Well, we're going to Mailbag. <laughs> All right. Mailbag is one of our favorite places here on the show because it's when we hear from you guys. You guys write us in and let us know exactly what you think. Ask us a question. If you guys want to do so, just email us collidervideo at gmail.com. And at the end of the show, we're going to take some time for your live Twitter questions. Even though we're not live, <laughs> you guys know how to tweet us at Collider Video. Ashley's going to pick a few out of the hat. Mm -hmm. Ashley, what's up first in the mailbox? Jeff Stevens writes, I found myself laughing at various comedies and jokes, but I've also had instances where I found myself finding something funny, even though I didn't laugh at it. Do you think you need to laugh at a comedy or a joke in order to call it funny? And what comedies have you found that to be the case? Uh, I mean, yes, the, the goal of comedy, I believe, is to make a noise come out of somebody's mouth, but you can like silently enjoy some stuff you can have a pleasant time watching something without laughing yourself i think that's why uh sitcoms use laugh tracks for so long and occasionally big bangs theory still does it is because you can be watching it at home and like you hear other people laughing so you're just like oh i guess i'm having a good time here even though i myself am not audibly laughing but when you go see a movie in a theater and it's a comedy and you don't hear a lot of noise in there that's kind of a problem. You're, it's very, very thin ice. That's the goal of a comedy is to make noise. So Chris and I were just laughing before the show started. Hot Shots. We were watching clips from Hot Shots. That, that's a movie where you laugh out loud watching, particularly the Lloyd Bridges scenes. Can you guys think of a comedy where you liked it, but you didn't laugh a lot? You know, the one that, the one that comes out right off the top of my head is Battlefield Earth. I think <laughs> like watching that, I just remember like smiling a lot. And then when, you know, Forrest Whitaker <laughs> kept yelling leverage and John Travolta was like, I've got leverage. <laughs> I just remember smiling and feeling like weird. I don't know if it was laughter, but that's all I got. Well, you know, also according to the Golden Globes, The Martian is a comedy, and That's I didn't right. audibly laugh at a lot of. I did at some. I found but. myself smiling at at, uh, at Matt Damon's kind of jokes and his little references when he was stuck in that biodome. So yeah, I mean, The Martian is also another comedy that I found myself silently laughing at. You know, Christian silent laughers. Uh, they're awful to have at comedy clubs. How about at a movie theater? You ever seen one? Uh, yeah, because I think that there's certain movies that you watch that. Uh, one of my favorite comedies of all time, which I don't really normally get huge belly laughs at, is Groundhog Day. Mm. Like, there's this, the thing with like when he's like Ned punch in the face. I was that 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 always got me. But that movie is a comedy. But you you're it's more about the premise and what Bill Murray's doing throughout it, and you're engaged in it the whole time. That it's not one of those ones where you're just holding your side, just cracking up, right. laughing about it. So I think there's tons of those. If you went through a list and and like even uh, like Ghostbusters, another Bill Murray movie. 
to this. Uh, no, you're laughing out loud. But like you're laughing. a lot a of John of Hughes films, like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, that is like a family film. It's it has funny moments in it, but it's not like a straight up gut like buster, comedy. Right. Yeah, yeah, see, I'd say buster. something what, what, like Breakfast Club or yeah. like Pretty in Pink, like a coming of age movie, yes. which has a lot of comedy in it, but they're also aiming at a higher goal. Even something like Home Alone has a few. At the end of Home Alone, when there's all like the the slapstick stuff with the wet band is trying to break in, mm-hmm. that stuff is some laugh out loud humor. But leading up to that, it's just an enjoyable movie where you're smiling the whole time, but you're not necessarily laughing out loud. So that was actually a really good question. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, What's our last mailbag one? Aaron Paul writes, Hi, Collider crew and greetings from England. Been a big fan for about six months now. And my question is, what are some of your favorite film posters of all time? Personally, I would go with Jaws. Thanks and keep up the great work. I love movie posters. I'm a huge fan of them. My favorite movie poster of all time is one that's it's actually, well, besides came to the Crystal Skull, Temple of Doom is my least favorite of the three Indiana Jones movies, but there is a poster where it's Indiana Jones and he looks like there's some, you know, stuff going on behind him. Like that's the entrance into the yeah. Temple of Doom. And he's standing there and he's got like, what is it, like a machete? And, and it a, says, and whip, if yeah. adventure has a name, it must be Indiana Jones. And it's just like, that's just, you, you got me. Here's my whatever it costs to go see this movie. I want to check this out. There's also a poster that I really liked. And I don't know why I like it so much. I never have seen the movie. But I've always wanted to see the movie, and that's Natural Born Killers. Oh, it's just that poster, the way Woody Harrelson looks. Like a year ago, this guy was Billy Hoyle to Wesley Snipes to Cindy Dean, and they were on the playgrounds of Venice at White Man Can't Jump. And now, what the hell happened to Woody Har- Who is this guy? I need to know more about this character. I like when posters intrigue you about the character you're paying to see, even more so than the movie overall. So those are a couple of my favorites. Now, uh, well, definitely, I mean, you know, I, I'll say it for you guys the original Star Wars by the brothers Hildebrandt that painted poster where you have Darth Vader in the background and Luke and Leia are in the front it's very much science fiction fantasy yet it also it just as a kid that's something that really sticks out to me did Um, the Hildebrandt brothers do that yeah Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so. they they like to paint a lot of girls with boobs. Oh yeah, yeah. they they uh, they're good painters. Huge uh, one fans. of them is not around anymore, but there's still one brother. Um, but uh, yeah, like I gotta say, Blade Runner. I have that hanging in my office. I love that poster. I love a lot of the the old '80s posters, like the Conan the Barbarian poster. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Tron. I like I just liked when there was more concept art as opposed to somebody's giant head. So right. I think you know of. The art of the movie poster, you know, has kind of diminished a little bit in the in the you know the, the, this new millennium, where it's just it's really like, hey, look at this person's in this movie, as opposed to what's this movie about and how do I intrigue you to come see it? So there's a battle between Harloff and I for one particular movie poster, and I'm gonna go to you for the tiebreaker. But first, I want to hear some other ones you love. We have one of them in our office, and it's the Dark Knight. It's the one. It's the one of uh, Heath Ledger, the Joker. Why so serious? Oh. And he and he's he's kind of painting on the the Joker smile mm-hmm. on the side. But he's it's like he's behind like a glass window. I love it. I mean, I fell in love with it when I when I saw it the first time. And it was even before he was introduced as the Joker. So it was just you knew they knew what they had. Also by the way that they were marketing it, and you got just from that poster alone. I wish we had got that on tape. Um, <laughs> but the, the, that was laugh out loud. Yeah, that was laugh out loud. Yeah. So that was, that's one for sure back to the future i think sums up perfectly what that movie yeah, is yeah, the look on michael j fox's face the delorean's um wing kind of you know the door kind of up in the air was a good one and then there was a, one other one that i had oh the going back to because i agree with you schnepp that today a lot of and i've made mention of it many times in the show it's like face this someone's face the whole time that's the trailer i mean that's the poster a uh, one that did it a while ago in 1984 that worked really well gun up sunglasses on terminator oh schwarzenegger totally. is the terminator uh, yeah, I thought you were talking about beverly hills cop no i don't know but Schwar- I, oh there it is yeah schwarzenegger is the yeah terminator. that was a good one that yeah. bad boy Love that's that one. a yeah. pretty sweet one yeah so the one that you and i do you know what i'm talking about the no. one that you and i argued about is no. you we both ended up liking the movie but you thought the poster was not a good selling point and i thought that the poster for the 40 year old virgin so perfectly sold what that movie it's like Mark Riley in is the going to be. Yeah. It's just yeah. so funny. It's just funny a to red background at. with Steve Carell. Like, yeah. Yeah. That movie surprised people with how much money it made opening weekend. I think in large part just because you hear the title 40 Year Old Virgin, you look at Steve Carell with that look on his face, and it's like, that's going to be hysterical. You know, I agree with you, but that that one poster then led to about five to six years of celebrities with a stupid one color background. Well, knocked up, yeah. then, then had yeah, Seth Rogen. But that, so I, in my opinion, that's also a funny poster because it's like, do you want this guy to get you pregnant? Right. It's just like that. It's funny. Having seen the movie, 
then yes, the poster really works for the film. The selling point, though, to get like, because I, I didn't, I had no idea what the movie was about. I remember I actually saw the movie with Mark Riley also, and we were driving to see it, and we saw that poster. And we're like, it just looks stupid. What kind of face is he making? What is it? What it's not telling me about the movie at all, too. And then once you learn about the character, does it? play into the movie doesn't work yeah but it was a dangerous move sure because it, you it didn't it paid you didn't, off big time it worked. You know i argue the point of both of you i think that the po i don't want that poster hanging in my house you know it's not it's not like a piece of art it's like you know steve carell's dumb face but for me when it came when that poster when i first saw it it made me laugh and it made me actually intrigued like what the hell is, what is it? you know what is this goofy you know what's it about so i think it worked as a sales tool but not as a piece of art. Right, well we don't have the benefit of the live chat here today, but we definitely wanna hear from you guys. Comment and let us know what are your favorite movie posters of all time. Ashley, I'm gonna ask you what your favorite movie poster uh -huh. is. You're not allowed to say Mean Girls. Well, obviously that's one of my favorites. Another maybe backup poster but you really But I do like. notice that when I'm at the theater, something that always catches my eye are the horror movie posters because mm. those just really like, can kind of give you an idea of how creepy it's gonna be. Um, I love the Poltergeist poster. Like that was, that's definitely like one of my favorites. I don't know. It creeps me out. Like, mm. why is this kid so close to Yeah, like that, yeah. that Exorcist poster, that image of yes. just, it's like just the dude looking up in a window and it's like, what's so scary about yeah, this? See the movie it. and come back and talk to definitely. us. All right, now it's time for the live Twitter questions. Ashley, I'm sure we have some live Twitter questions for mm -hmm. you to sort through. What's we up We actually first? have a lot. Um, first one comes from Rafa Sandoval and they write, if you could be an extra in any movie of your choice, what movie would that be? An extra in any movie of your choice. What would that be? For whatever reason, we were talking about this at the office yesterday, like some movies with notoriously bad extras in them. Oh, yeah, like, where they stare at the camera. Yeah, Amazing yeah. Spider-Man 2 is, is obviously the worst extra work of all time. So I would actually love to be an extra in Amazing Spider-Man 2 because then you could point to me and be like, see, that guy is doing his job. Yeah. That guy's turning and running the other direction while everybody else is just lining Standing up to watch Standing there to this. be shot by the rhino. Idiots. Oh, I, I would love to be somewhat in a period piece, I think, because even if you're an extra, you still get to dress up in like the garb. Right. So, sure. you know, something like maybe like the Untouchables. That'd be a fun movie to be an extra. I'd probably get shot, but it'd be a fun movie to be an extra in. Uh, Christian, have you ever been an extra in a oh, movie? Oh, yeah. I was, I was, well, someone actually found it. It was a uh, point of origin. Was the the nice. and I was literally just me and Ray Liotta at the bar and I'm like rum and coke. Um, so someone picked that up and I was also uh, almost famous, which you can't see me at all. But if I was going to be an extra, Boogie Nights. Bam. Ah, that's a, a good of, one. A lot of eye candy to look at I can't at believe there. you guys didn't take it. I'm taking it Star Wars. I would love to be like an X-Wing pilot or some dude in the background, like agreeing, like, we must blow up the seventh Death Star. I'd be like, yes, we'll do it. There's a pipe in somewhere in the middle that we could shoot at. So I would, I would just, love to be in I that. I would just ruin Star Wars. I'm not going to be the Rudy of that franchise. No, I, just, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would not look at the camera while I was like tracking across like, uh, you know. I'd be in the movie. I'd and be, you also well, were an extra. I was an extra in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. A lot of you uh, might have found that image of me online. And yeah. Then also, I'm um, in the light in this Michael J. Fox movie called Light of Day. Love I think it's movie. right before the Thunderbirds play or after one of the two. Michael Michael McKee and him are walking along, and uh, if you look quickly, you'll see me as the camera pans. I do a sip of like an extra dumb sip of beer you got no place to yeah. go light of day and <laughs> point of origin two awful titles for movies where you can catch john schnapp and christian harloff okay what's our next one mike McHale writes best one hit wonder actor slash actress i think of alicia silverstone from clueless yes yeah i mean she was in other stuff she was in excess baggage she had some other well, things she going she's in uh, the the uh the, <laughs> what was it the neighbor where her and carrie always you guys are reaching uh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so one hit Wonder actress or actor. Um, Yahoo man. Sirius. Yeah, that's a Yahoo good one. Sirius, who was in uh, Young, Young, Einstein, Fra Young Einstein. Freakish Einstein or right. whatever it was called. Um, yeah, I mean, the one that, and look, I know the guy's worked since then, but. And Henry Thomas was, I think he was in Fire in the Sky. I think oh, he, he was, was in, he was around. He, he's in a bunch of Legends stuff. Legends of the Fall. He's in a yeah. bunch of stuff. Yeah. But as an like, older dude. As the kid in E.T. Yeah. E. He was in one, just like not, one and done. so far yeah. out of the park I, in, in that realm. Macaulay Culkin was in other stuff. He was in other stuff, but nobody thinks of anything else that he was in when you see it's just he was in Home Alone. He's Kevin McAllister from Home Alone and then maybe from the black or white video too. I got, uh, what do you Bra got? Brandon Ralph, Mr. Superman himself. 
Yeah. Right. Well, uh, I mean, luckily, Shannon Elizabeth. But American Brandon Pie. Ralph was able to scrimp down and do some television. Now he's the Adam. He was he's one of the legends uh, of. Uh, he was one of the, the extras in Scott Pilgrim too. But, right. I mean, but his movie but career. These right. are these are these are people who you know Scott Pilgrim was a feature film if you look it up. But these are like things that like they're no known ball bag. For. He wasn't. But he wasn't the he wasn't the lead. What is the lead? Well, was the, well, yeah, but you're like, oh, because it was a movie. Wow. I've seen movies. It it's was like, a, it was a feature. He, film he was talking about the schmoes, schmoes, schmoes. No, take it name back a little bit, schmoes. Come on. <laughs> but I don't know if you need to, you know, you need to yeah. say, oh, you haven't seen the movie. Don't let you know. It's, a, it's an actual movie that happens. These guys with haven't, cameras had, and they, these no, guys go, haven't go. had their coffee wow. yet. Okay. So, so silly. <laughs> I guess, Ashley, what's our next <laughs> no, Oh, well, You don't want to talk about Shannon Elizabeth? Not really anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. Linda Blair. <laughs> Linda Blair is a good one, but she she saves animals now. She's a, she's but it's not a movie. No, I know. She's not a movie. Oh, okay. Easy, easy. And she wasn't a star of that movie. Did you get all your pee out when you won? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's our next question? Actually? Tristan writes, in honor of Jungle Book, who are some of your favorite movie animals? Ooh. Oh, man. Favorite movie animals of all time. Well, like, like Baloo from the first one was great. The what? Uh, I would go with, uh, I don't, like, all the Lion King animals are great, but, like, any one of them in particular, I don't really care about. Like, mm -hmm. like Mufasa's great, Simba's great on his own, but <laughs> favorite movie animal of all time. I would go with the fox from Robin Hood. Mm. Oh, Robin Hood, the fox. Yeah, and sure. Marion's great, but the fox and Robin Hood to me is everything you want out of a Robin Hood. Uh, Boy, I mean, since we were going animated, you could you could pick a lot of like animals like Bambi, uh, Dumbo, Blue mm. from the original animated Jungle yeah. Book. Um, live action animals, I, I can't. Uh, it's hard to think. I mean, because I saw Garfield. That was garbage. <laughs> so, like you know, there's yeah. a lot of. A lot, of, a lot of ones that they tried. Yeah. I mean, oh, you Paddington. You liked Paddington. Paddington, yeah. Paddington thank yeah. you. Yeah. I I'll, loved Paddington. I'll yeah. steal from you in Robin Hood, but not the actual Robin Hood, Little John, which is a bear, mm. also voiced by the same uh, guy who did Baloo. And they stole the a lot of the same animation. Whichever one came <laughs> first, they, they just <laughs> that, that copied bears. it. Yeah, they yeah. did. It's a pretty similar looking bear. Yeah. Well, like bears, I think bears are pretty much undefeated in terms of cinema. Like You don't really see a lot of bad bears anymore. Right. You have the bear, you have the bear from The Edge, the bear from The Revenant was great, Paddington. So <laughs> the bear if, from The Revenant. If you're a bear, the bear from The Revenant was awesome. Yeah. If yeah. you're a bear, you probably were great on screen. I like Actually, Paddington. Your favorite That's animal in a movie? Um, the lemur from Madagascar was adorable, but uh, one that shines to me is Donkey from Shrek. Oh, nice. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good he one. Shines. Yeah. He shines. Eddie Murphy shines. <laughs> Let's do one more Twitter question. Okay. Josh, hashtag keep binging, writes What do you think about some people saying people had an agenda to hate B versus S? Um, I, I don't think people had an agenda to hate Batman versus Superman. I know for myself, because I walk in a lot of different worlds in the entertainment industry, I could not wait to see that movie. I was so happy when they announced the title. They threw Dawn of Justice in there, too, and I'm like, all right, but as long as the majority of the movie is Batman and Superman going at it, I want to see this movie so bad. It was my number two most anticipated, just under Rogue One, and I almost thought about putting it above Rogue One. That's how much I wanted to see this movie, and I just didn't like it like I thought I wanted to like I thought it was going to do for me but I didn't have an agenda to go in and be like right. oh, I can't wait to hate this movie I think it's such a ridiculous statement it's something where somebody who wants to defend the movie is going to throw at you because oh here's something else you like so why didn't you like this it, it opinions can be very very different but you know at least from our crew you're getting honesty there's this, no agenda this guy was singing a song on the way to see Batman vs Superman singing a song to us we're going to see Batman vs Superman <laughs> can't right. wait you already saw but I don't care because I get to see it and he was it, he looked like he was 12 12 years old yeah. and he's been one of the guys that has been most disappointed with the film and I've seen it I know where the question comes from because there's been other people on in our space that do what we do that are making the accusations and I gotta say shame on you for doing that because you're part of this and you should know better than most anybody else to not be doing that um, but that being said it's it, it it's just you, you throw you throw him fuel to the fire because there's there's a few people that write oh you guys just hate it because Disney paid you off right. and then you get someone else going you know what you make a good point maybe they are and it's, it's just it's it's nonsense and we talked about this on Mailbag it makes no sense right. for Disney to do that because can you imagine if dis if it came out that Disney was paying off YouTube critics to say that they liked Civil War yeah ridiculous that's they're gonna risk their their empire on a, a hey guys say you like 
like it. They want you to talk about it. Whether you like it or you don't, at least you're talking about it. It's a, it's ridiculous. It is asinine, and, and it's really dopey and irresponsible for some people to be saying that. You know, it's fun. I'm glad you made those voices because, honestly, when, when we read comments that's, that say that, that's how we hear people. Yeah. They, Yo, you guys can pay it off. You sound like you sound so dumb that you have to make voices. You can't read it like a regular person. The, your your question, though, it's, I'm glad you brought up. There is zero agenda. I, Like Christian said, I was so incredibly excited to see this film and so disappointed by the outcome that it actually took me almost a full week to recover <laughs> from my disappointment. Like, I mean, we did a review the like literally an hour after and my numbers kept dropping every every day. The next day it dropped a full point and then the next week I was down another point. It was just because I saw it again and it was like, it didn't work out for me. The story didn't work. Uh, the characters didn't work. I felt there was like a, oh, to me, almost a betrayal of the characters in a certain sense as to at least what I expected or what was my opinion of these characters. So, I mean, every everybody has their own opinion. I mean, all the people who love Batman v Superman is like, I give it a 10 out of 10, it's a masterpiece. Just because I didn't doesn't mean I'm wrong. And I'm not saying you're wrong, it's our opinion. But there was no agenda at all. I wanted to love that movie. I wanted to, I wanted that movie to be the number one film of all superheroes for me and it didn't it didn't happen so you know the great thing about it is hey people learn from their mistakes recently we heard there was like a four-hour cut of batman v superman that alone should tell you why at least some people didn't like it or say it didn't make sense or felt that it was like oh these storyline segments just drop off or don't have any there's no reason that people want to do this there's no i mean that's what i'm saying is like they had four hours and they had to cut out an hour and a half of story i mean that's that'll tell you something you know i don't think anybody went in to see batman v superman with a hate on and i think dc has a like 10 more movies to make it up for us i think suicide squad i'm looking forward to that there's nothing there's i mean i wish i was on somebody's payroll that would be awesome yeah you know? it'd be nice for anybody to pay me but i still would not take it because i want to be honest in all of our opinions i think we want to be honest and we want to love every movie we go i wanted to love huntsman i wanted to go in there and be like man that movie really surprised me just doesn't happen sometimes and unfortunately that was the case with a lot of people with batman versus superman if you loved it great just didn't really do it for me the way i thought you know that's something that, uh, that's should be said I was talking to um, like even talking to somebody last night about it and we were talking about Rotten Tomatoes you know and, they, and at first fans were like well Rotten Tomatoes is paid off to to hate Warner Brothers and then they realize Warner Brothers owns Rotten Tomatoes right. and they go oh well, well some of the critics on there and then they but why don't they say that we because we don't like Universal we have something against Chris Hemsworth or we have something against uh, Universal. It's because the silly war that the that the fans because DC versus Marvel. Right. If you don't like it, and the funny thing is, I think that I liked Batman v Superman the most out of this entire table, and I still think that I could go again and take a lot of stuff out of it that I enjoyed. It's just, and I don't mind you saying, "Hey, I totally disagree. This is what I liked about it, and this is why those moments that you clearly argued for, I think, are the exact reason why that worked." I like those conversations, and I think that if you see mo a certain movie one way, then you should defend that. Right. But to be irresponsible and to say that you are paid off and as a fan if you're screaming out there and you're saying that then that's just that's just lunacy but if you're in this space if you're part of this community and you're doing that shame on you wow we took it like a crazy madcap show we actually yeah. you know kind of tied it together in a yeah. nice bow and that was a really nice presentation of an argument that's going on all over the world yeah. right now as to whether people have an agenda and uh Job well done, boys and girls. Okay, that is it for Movie Talk here. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us on a Taco Tuesday. I want to thank everybody behind the cameras for keeping us semi-sane. And then, of course, the crew in front of the camera. First of all, Mr. John Schnepp, where hey. can people find you when you're not napping? Uh, when I'm not asleep and uh, late for work, you guys can find me uh, on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. Uh, check out my Kickstarter. It's the last two days. Rally, help me make this film. Uh, Sweaties Unite, Rise of Uber Nerd. You could still donate. Let's see if we make this film or not. You know what is going to happen, though? This Friday, I'm going to attack uh, Woodstock, Chimpstock, whatever his name is. I'll just lay, let's just uh, sit on Chimpstock for right now. It's going to be a battle. Let's see if his luck wins out this time. That movie trivia schmodown will be live. You guys can check it out. Collider video on Friday. Christian, you have a lot of affectionate titles you like to call people from time to time. Where can everybody find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. And also, look, I just mentioned uh, Twitter because I have a of two polls of one on Schmoes and one on my personal Twitter. And it's a matter of who do you think is going to win? Is it going to be 
Mr. Schnepp or Mr. Finstock. People are saying this is going to be our first knockout of the new of the new tournament. The Schnepp's just going to roll over Finstock. Very curious to what you guys say. I'm, the poll's going to be up there until Friday. Got about five days left. Go vote. And then on the, the Schmo's Twitter, we have what match are you looking forward to the most? Schnepp versus Finstock. Next week's title match with Riley versus JTE. Or the team tournament, the team finals with myself and Mark Ellis against JTE and Mr. Finstock. And the Pink Ranger, Ashley Mova. Where can everybody find you? On Twitter and on Instagram, Ashley Mova. Happy Tuesday, guys. Well, remember, guys, you guys can always go to amctheaters.com to get your latest box offices and showtime ticket information. And collider.com is the website you should go to for all your latest up-to-date movie news. That's where we get a lot of the scoops that we talk about on this very show. And, of course, subscribe here on Collider Video to our YouTube channel. Christian and I have our YouTube channel schmoes no subscribe there as well my name is mark i'll be at flappers in burbank tonight but it's sold out so let them know you want to come back and see me soon and uh upcoming dates include minneapolis and houston be on the lookout for that at mark ellis live until tomorrow this is mark the ball bag ellis signing off <laughs> happy tuesday everybody hey guys if you like this video click the thumbs up button also make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel it'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at collider